Hello, I'm James Ingram for AutoControls.org. In this video, we'll be using video, we'll be using an NCE DCC power cab with an NCE mini panel to automatically control three N-gauge trains running on the same track with no turnouts. In the previous video, uh, 826, we controlled three, uh, two MTH O-gauge locomotives on a fairly small loop, but here we have a longer main line so we can actually control three trains. Also, note back in uh, an earlier video, video 819, we controlled three HO trains running on the same main line with no turnout. In that system, we kept both trains running at a slow speed in the yard while the third train was on the main line, which is a, also another way to do it. In this video, we'll do it similarly, but it's slightly different. We're actually stopping two trains in the yard. You can maybe see the two trains in the yard uh, to, to the right of my head or whichever direction that is over there. Uh, there's two trains stopped, and then the third train will be on the, the main line. Uh, at any rate, I hope you find this interesting, and thank you for watching. We've got a uh, NCE DCC power cab providing power to this system. That's what's shown here, and I'm going to lift it out of the way so it doesn't block the camera so much. And in over to the right here, just at the edge, I think you can see there's a device called an NCE mini panel, which is sort of a programmable uh, model train controller that we can do automatic controls with. And then back in the far rear, you see there's a lighted Z stuff detector. That's what's going to detect the trains. And we've got three N gauge trains on the same main line track. Um, in the track over near the wall, you might be able to see there's a sign. Um, over there that says yard. We're calling that the yard area where we park two of the trains most of the time. And we'll refer to the uh, yellow engine that's in the uh, right up here close in the uh, left corner. We'll refer to that as the freight train. And there's a yellow uh, Union Pacific E9 back there. We'll call that the yellow train. And then behind it, kind of hidden, there's a red Santa Fe Elko PA, we'll call that the red train. So we've got the, back there we've got the the uh, yellow train, the red train, and up here the freight train. And we'll start these up so you can see how they operate. Uh, please notice also we've got two uh, stations here. There's a station over on the uh, left where that uh, freight engine is parked. And then there's a second station back there by the yard sign where the uh, red train is parked. And notice those two trains are parked as close to those stations. Uh, stations. Uh, I'm going to push this button here that's marked push and release. Uh, and this could be a button like on a public display that people would push. And that will start up the, the uh, yellow train running. And that will keep running until it gets back to that detector in the right corner and when it reaches that detector it'll start the freight engine up at speed 8 uh, and that the yellow train by the way is running at speed 8 and it'll start the uh, red train up at speed 5 and when it goes when the yellow train goes past the detector it'll slow it down to speed 4 so that one's creeping up in the yard at speed 4. The red train is ahead of it, creeping at speed 5. And the uh, freight train is on the main line, running at speed 8. And a second of delay statement will time out, which will park them at the stations. There it went. Those two stop. Now they'll sit and wait until the freight train gets around and reaches the detector. And then the same cycle will repeat again. So it's actually a fairly simple process once you get it worked out. Uh, you wait till the train on the main line, which is the freight train, reaches the detector. Then you start up the two trains in the yard. Now you can see the detector went from green to red. And the uh, 
red the red train started up at mainline speed eight, and the uh, yellow train is keep it creeping forward up here on the left at speed five, and the freight train is back in the rear creeping up at speed four. So again, it's a fairly simple operation. We keep two in the yard, and when our train comes in off the main line and passes a de detector, those trains in the yard are started up, and the front one is sent out onto the main line at main line speed. Uh, the middle train, which will be the freight train, that gets moved forward from the, from the rear station to the front station. Now here's our detector going red. And that, that red train is coming in at speed 4, the freight train's moving up at speed 5, and the uh, yellow train's on the main line moving at speed 8. Now when that delay st statement times out, I believe they'll all stop. Yeah, they went through one cycle. Now notice we're, we're right back where we started. The, uh, the way it's set up right now, it runs one cycle, uh, so that this was on a display and somebody pushed that button, would run through a complete cycle and then park the trains right where they started out from. Now I'm going to start this up again and we'll run it another cycle except I'm going to do one thing uh, differently. There's a switch we can close that'll uh, signal the mini panel to keep running. Uh, the trains instead of stopping after one cycle. In other words, said, uh, said another way, it'll keep them running continuously. So if we push this button here, our push and release button, that starts the uh, passenger train up. Now we'll go over here and there's a switch on the near the mini panel. I'm going to push this switch That's connected, I believe, the input 18. It just, it just uh, instead of stopping the sequence, it'll just keep it running continuously as long as that switch is up. Now we're getting the same effect as before. That train's pulling into the siding at speed 4. Uh, the middle that train, which is the red passenger train, is pulling up to the other station at speed 5. And our freight train is out on the uh, main line at speed eight. These are these three locomotives are all three uh, Cotto locomotives with the uh, ESU loke sound. I've, I've got the sound of the motor turned of uh, the prime mover turned off so it doesn't drown my voice out. But uh, the, in these engines, the uh, horns still seem to blow. That as you you hear them, there's a uh, there's a command in the mini panel that tells it to blow the horn after it passes a detector. Now we've got our red train out on the main line at speed 8. The uh, yellow train is pulling up at speed 5 up towards the uh, front station and the one that came off the main line, the freight train, is pulling up at speed 4. And when that there's like a delay statement in the mini panel, it just tells it to do nothing uh, it, it, for so many seconds, and then when it times out, it sends a speed zero command to those two engines in the yard, which is what stops them. And this is Cotto uh, Unitrack, and it's it's just on a, a simple one of those 30 inch wide by eight foot long office tables like you get at Sam's Club. Okay. Now here's the here's what before was the end of the sequence. Remember that uh, yellow train that's out on the main line when it got up where I laid that uh, piece of track down up at the far end there. That's where it stopped. But I've got that switch thrown, so now it's repeating in a second cycle. It's actually starting all over again with the uh, the yellow engine, which is the first one that it runs. And that, that detector back there, that's a Z stuff, DZ1012 detector, by the way. It's actually made for O gauge and S gauge, and I've used it in previous O gauge videos. Um, 
but I, I found I can lower it a little bit. I took it off the piece of wood and hot glued it onto the side where you see it now and it actually can pick up an N-gauge uh, train even though it's a little oversized for N-gauge. Uh, they do make, Z-Stuff does make uh, HO gauge and N-gauge detectors, but I don't have one in there. Uh, you have to drill a hole in the table or your train platform to put part of it down through the platform and I didn't want to do that with a this bank this uh, office table so it's more convenient for me to use the uh, larger detector even though it's out of scale and the DZ 1012 is actually overkill for this it has a variable time delay which we don't need the, the DZ 1011 is a uh, a cheaper one that doesn't have the variable time delay which would do the job uh, fine except it's it's taller and the, the light's not quite as bright so since I had this one it's the one I'm using for this demonstration and then back behind that detector uh, there's a what's called a DZ1008 uh, relay again made by Z stuff it's made to operate with the with the block signal detector and it just closes a contact when the trains uh, change it from green to red. It's an infrared sensor so whenever a train blocks its beam that's it detects that and changes from green to red and closes the contacts. Closes the contacts on the relay and the, th that instead of that Z stuff detector you could be using like a reed switch or a, uh, an electric eye or some other brand of infrared detector like an uh, Aza tracks or uh, whatever anything that you can get to close a relay and uh, that's what signals the mini panel that the train is there it's just basically com closing a circuit it could be your uh, eight-year-old grandson sitting there with a push button pushing a push button when the train reached that point just something or just putting two wires together anything that closes a circuit that uh, signals the mini panel that the train is there. Now you can see we're starting on I think the third cycle at this point. The yellow engine went past the uh, detector area for the third time. And I'm going to see if I can turn the uh, sound on to these engines. You can hear them with the sound. It kind of drowned my voice out, but uh, that's the sound in the uh, the yellow freight engine, the SD70. That has the worst sound of the three of them because I think it's got a smaller speaker because of a narrower body. I just turned the sound on to the, uh, the red uh, Alco PA and that has better sound I think because it's got a wider body. The speakers in these Cotto engines sit back in the rear so the wider body engines I believe can have a wider speaker. I just turned the sound on to the, uh, the uh, yellow train, the, the uh, E9. The E9 seems to have the uh, best sound of the three of them. Some people don't like the sound, uh, but I think it adds to the display. So I run the sound engines whenever I can. I think that's making about the fourth cycle or something like that. You're seeing the same thing repeating over. You're just hearing it this time with the sound on.
Notice the uh, layout has no blocks in it or any uh, special wire. It's just a simple loop of track and I've got the uh, Oh, there's only really four wires going to the layout itself. There's uh, two here for a track uh, connector, and there's two over here for another track connector. So other than those two track connectors, that's the only wiring connected to the layout. There's four wires going to the Z-Stuff detector, four, two for power and two for the signal coming back. But the Z-Stuff detector is not connected to the track, it just sits next to the track. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and push this switch down which is our continuous run switch. So when they complete a cycle this time, they'll park themselves right where they started out. And that should happen when that yellow uh, train that's sitting in the front left reaches that piece of track, track down there. That's when the delay statement engine will stop. Then there's a delay statement that's running those three trains and when it times out and the, the mini panel sees that switch is not closed then it, it, it stops its execution and you can see everything parked itself there. Now they'll sit there and wait uh, on this display or whatever this is. They'll sit and wait uh, for however long, five minutes, an hour, or whatever until somebody comes along and pushes this button again and then that starts them up and the whole process will start repeating again. One thing I should mention, when you've got a layout set up with automatic controls like this, uh, with DCC, you still have full manual control over the layout. Uh, when the mini panel's either unplugged or not operating, um, you can still control it manually. For example, I've got uh, Loco 9088 selected, which is the freight engine in the left of the camera. If I give this a speed command, you can see it just started up. Uh, you can control it fully manually. I'm going to go back to zero. Uh, I tell people the mini panel, you can consider it like a a robot holding one of these cabs and just controlling the train just like if you had another operator holding a cab and controlling a train but instead the mini panel is sort of like a robot it operates on its own but it it basically sends a command just like somebody pushing these buttons so like I said when it's unplugged or when it's idling which it's doing now it has no effect on the layout Now, what we'll do next, we'll do a variation of the operation you saw before. I'm going to push the start button and we'll start our trains up. Now what we can do, we can increase that delay statement uh, that we have when the train crosses in front of the detector and that'll make the trains in the yard keep running longer. I'm going to do that now. We're going to put the continuous run button on that's it, and I'm going to throw this switch here, which adds more delay uh, time after the loco crosses in front of the detector. Now the delay statement is executing, and if you watch the, uh, the yellow train coming into the yard and the red train moving up on the left, they won't stop at those stations. They'll actually pull up faster because we're using a longer delay statement. This just gives you a variation in your operating capabilities that allows you to to uh, keep them running longer if you want to. And if you see that piece of track over there, they're headed, most of them are heading for that track. The red one didn't get quite that far, but you can see it did pull up uh, longer. Now when the freight engine gets down to the uh, detector, Again, it starts with the delay, delay statement, but the delay statement is longer. You, you have a minimum and a maximum range of delay statements you can work with. Uh, 
the minimum uh, delay has to pull the train that comes into the yard up far enough that it's out of the way of the next train. That's, that's kind of obvious. The maximum is not so obvious. The maximum is really this train here and the one in the yard. They've got us be stopped. That means the delay ended. That has to happen before that train that's running, the red, red train, reaches a detector. If, if that delay statement hasn't stopped, the uh, mini panel won't detect when the engine reaches the detector and they'll be out of sequence. That's not obvious just watching the layout. You have to actually study the, the programming a little bit and see how it works. You can see the, the red train is pulling into the yard and again it has to have at least enough delay that it pulls up far enough that it gets out of the way of the next train coming in. Um, that it has to be short enough that it ends before the train on the main line reaches a detector. So you've got a, a minimum and a maximum range you can, you can work with. And one more thing to mention, I think it's showing up over here. The mini panel has, right where my finger is pointing, the mini panel has a red LED and that blinks whenever the mini panel sees, sends a command. If you watch it where my finger is, when those trains stop, you'll see it blink just before that happens because it's sending a speed zero command to those two engines there, it blinked. And if you watch when that freight train goes in front of the detector, you should see it blink again. There it goes. And that. And again, as I said, whenever the mini panel is sending commands, you'll see that uh, red LED blinking. Now let's turn the sound on. We'll get our sound effects again. Now the sound on sound should be on for all three locomotives. And again, if we if we uh, if we turn off the continuous run button, they'll do the same thing as before. They'll make a cycle and they'll they'll stop. So this will run single cycles if you want with the long delay. They're just it just timed out. That's where they'll stop with a long delay. And again, they'll wait until somebody comes along and pushes the button to start them up again. So I'll push this button. And we can also shift on the fly to our shorter delay. If I I just push that button down, which opens the uh, switch, which goes back to a shorter delay. Now if you watch the yellow engine back in the far corner, that's running on a short, the shorter delay again because I opened that switch and they'll park in the original position. There you can see it pulled up to the, uh, pulled up to the station where it was before. And again, that's, that delay has to be long enough that that yellow train gets far enough ahead of the detector so that the next train won't run into the rear of it. You've got the momentum of the train starting up to consider uh, and plus you don't want them right on each other's tail so probably, probably the amount of delay that I have is close to the minimum that you would want to have. Now you can see the, uh, the yellow train over here on the uh, far left get pulled up to the station as before. They're, they're going back to their original positions, in other words. Now I've got the continuous run switch, which is over here. I've got that open. So once it completes this cycle, uh, the, the statement in the programming that, that checks whether that switch is closed or not uh, 
will find that it's open and it'll stop them and park them. So you can see they went back to their original positions and again they'll they'll wait there until somebody comes along and pushes the button but you can you can do those switches on the fly either the continuous run or changing the delay and it'll adjust back and forth as need be and again it'll wait until these will wait for you know however long somebody comes along and pushes that switch again and then they'll take off again now we've got one more variation uh, we can do with operating this layout instead of those uh, engines when they pull up in the front of the yard like where this uh, freight train is parked instead of stopping those we can let that just continue to run at a reduced speed and there's a switch we have to control that and we'll demonstrate that now we'll start them up as usual now we'll throw our continuous run switch so it'll keep running continuously and I'll throw this switch which is wired I believe to input 24 and that makes a little change in the way the program executes that it'll keep the uh, front engine and the yard running slowly instead of stopping at and we'll see we should be able to see that in a minute. Okay, that train, the, the uh, yellow train passed the detector. You can see the freight train is out on the main line, same as before, running at speed 8. That uh, red, and red train coming up on the left, now that would normally stop about here where the station is, but you can see it keeps right on going. It's running at speed 5, so we can have essentially two trains continuously running all the time. We just let that red train run at speed 5. We can't run it at speed 8 because it, it doesn't it gets too close to the uh, to the freight train so we got to keep it running slower to, to keep it back a distance. Again now there's a the delay statement is executing that's bringing those two trains forward in the yard and as before that delay statement that the mini panel is executing, that has to end so that it can finish with the delay statement and get to the ne next statement, which is the one that watches for the detector to be closed. And you can see the, uh, the yellow trains running at speed 5. It's actually up at speed 8 now, but... Okay, our delay statement ended, and uh, again, the freight train, instead of stopping, it's, it's out on the main line at speed 5 going continuously. Again, it's got to stay far enough back so that when the mini panel executes the delay statement to control the trains in the yard, it can finish with that delay statement, and you can watch, watch the uh, yellow train back in the rear it's pulling up toward the rear station when that train stops that's when that delay statement that's when we know we can tell that delay statement is finished there it just stopped now we know the delay statement is finished and that that has to happen before that tra freight train gets to the detector so the mini panel can sense the freight train coming in This way, we'd like as I mentioned, we can have we can keep the uh, keep essentially two trains running continuously at all times. And again, I'll turn the sound on so we can hear this with the uh, sound. Now I believe we got the sound on on all three engines, so this is how you'd have it operating normally on a display layout.
and I, I've got it pushed just about to the limit because you can see while well, the red train stopped back in the rear and uh, there's not a whole lot of time between when that red train stopped and when the yellow train gets to the detector so Now again, the delay statement's executing, and watch the uh, yellow train back in the far left corner. It's pulling up to the station, and we can see when that delay statement ends. Now the uh, detector, the detector is uh, when the detector's crossed, the mini panel will see it, and uh, you can see the red train in the front keeps moving. Now if I go switch the uh, continuous run switch. If I open that switch, that should stop them the next cycle around. Cross the detector. Now we're executing the delay statement again. And then when that delay statement times out, you can see it happen when the red red train gets up to the station. It stops. It sends commands to stop all three engines. So again, they'll they'll sit there and they'll idle. And uh, then same thing as before. If 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 they sit here and wait an hour and somebody else comes along and wants to see the trains run, they can push the button and uh, the sequence will start up again. You can see the, the yellow train headed for the detector. Now our delay statement started which is moving the trains up in the yard. So you can see we have still, we have one train stopping at the station. The yellow train stopped back at the rear station, but the other two keep moving. And as I mentioned, the uh, freight train is moving at speed eight, which is the main line speed, so to speak and the uh, red train is moving at speed 5. I, I can't run them much faster than speed 5 or they get too close to the train in front and then uh, the timing gets off. And you, you can do this with different brands of diesels. I originally set this up with a uh, a lifelike Elko running a, a Digitrax decoder, an older engine, and a, uh, with, with an NCE decoder. I mean, in a, in a lifelike and a uh, Cotto, older, older Cotto engine running a uh, Digitrax decoder. And it worked, but they didn't run the same speed at the same speed setting. So, uh, with these all three being Cottos with the same type of decoder, and it's easier to do the programming and control them because they run about the same speeds at the same speed settings. Now there we just we just timed out again. There was that while I was talking it ran one one cycle with this mode of operation of two trains all moving and again they'll sit there and wait until we push the button again and uh, the system will start up again. Now now the same thing is happening as happened a minute ago. We've moved up a little closer to the mini panel. Again, here's the uh, mini panel that's doing all the uh, controlling. And this button here is connected to the reset terminals. That's what you use to reset this thing if you have to interrupt it and stop it. If you watch this LED, which I think will show up, whenever I push that button, I can make that blink. That's how you know it's alive. You push this button and you can make it blink. Now, we can execute a a little test routine to test our detector. 
This is like when you first hook this thing up and you want to make sure the detector's communicating with the mini panel. I just got a wire connected to, I think it's terminal 3 here, and if I ground this wire to the ground uh, terminals, what I'm doing now, it should have started a test routine. And if I push this button, you can see how it's causing not the blink. What it's doing, it's just executing a routine that if this button is closed, it sends a dummy command to throw a, a turnout that's not even hooked up to the layout. But when it sends that command, um, it'll cause that uh, LED to blink. So this is the button we use to start the train. You can see that's blinking. And this button labeled 3 uh, on the board, that's the same thing. This I call this thing the control board. But if I push this button, there you can see that was make, that makes it blink also. And this button is for starting a two train sequence. Uh, it'll test that button also. And again, you can see a blink. Now probably the most important thing to test is the detector down here. If I, uh, if I push these cars in front of the detector so it goes red, you can see the mini panel starts blinking again. And uh, that, that indicates our, our detector is communicating with our mini panel. I usually do this stuff before I actually start the trains up to try to verify everything is working okay. And if I push the uh, reset button that should stop it. You can see it stopped blinking because I forced this thing to stop operating. Now it's just idling. And here you're seeing a closer look at these three switches. One, one for continuous run, uh, which we had demonstrated, I think, the first demo. One for more delay, which was the second demo. And one for keeping the uh, second engine running continuously, which was the, which was the uh, third demonstration. Here's a closer look at the uh, the Z stuff detector. As I mentioned before, this is a uh, what they call a DZ1012. Uh, it's actually an O gauge, S gauge size detector, but um, it sends out an infrared beam at about a 45 degree angle. So if something blocks that infrared beam, it'll uh, it'll pick it up. But if it's on the adjacent track, like over over here, it, it won't. Uh, and then down here is a DZ-1008-1008 relay which is made to operate with this detector and all this does is close a set of points the same as a, uh, if a read switch was closing or if you just touched two wires together and it just grounds the uh, input of the mini panel which is how the mini panel knows that the uh, train is there. In other words the mini panel's inputs are, are made, that's basically how they, they work. They're set up to be grounded by either a push button or relay or something like that or you touching wires together or some, something that connects that input terminal to ground. That's how the mini panel senses senses its input. And if you watch any of my previous videos this thing was sitting up, up on top here for the O-gauge video. That screw was what held it on top of here and it, it was too high to detect an end scale train but I found by taking it off moving it down here lower and I just hot glued it onto the side of this piece of wood it's low enough that it detects end scale trains. You can see when I uh, push this unit in front of the detector it, it goes to red and that'll stay red as long as it's being blocked and then when it when it clears when it clears the detector you can see it goes back to green after about two seconds. So that's how we're sensing the trains. And uh, it only it has four wires connected as a, considered as a unit here, which is what I've done. You, you have two wires coming in for power. That's the red and green. And then these two wires, the black and white, come out as the uh, relay. And it's, nor it's I've hooked up to the normally open. So normally these wires aren't, aren't uh, connected. But when this thing goes to red when a train goes in front of it then the uh, relay closes and um, the, the connection is made that the, the mini panel can sense it. The uh, layout as you see it here is on the table it's configured for normal normal train operation uh, without any automatic controls. If you look at what's hooked on the layout as far as wires there's uh, two wires here, 
for this track terminal. There's two wire, wires back there for the other track terminal, a total of four wires, and that's it. Very simple. Now, if we want to uh, set this layout up for the automatic controls that we showed a minute ago, all we do basically is, I've got it sitting here, we add the Z-stuff detector, slide it up next to the track, and there, now we're configured for automatic control. You can see I didn't have to, to take the part, track apart. I didn't have to drill anything to the table. I didn't have to solder anything to the track or connect anything to the track. You just slide that uh, infrared detector up next to the track and you're ready to do the automatic controls as you saw previously in the video. And again, to remove the detector, it's a matter of uh, you know grabbing it and, and putting it wherever you want to take it. Now we're back to a layout without any uh, out any detection for automatic controls, but you know, very simple using these these uh, infrared detectors. Here's a uh, closer look at our control panel. We've got the mini panel in the center. Uh, here's the uh, connection for the power cab. I think NCE calls this the PCP for power control panel, but these two wires. Uh, here or where the track power goes out to the track. Um, we got button two for, this is for two train operation, uh, and this one over here is for three train operation. This connects to uh, input two that starts the three trains. And over here we've got the uh, three switches, uh, 18, 20, and 24 that we use for uh, various various things as demonstrated. And I've got a uh, normal terminal strip here. Uh, I don't like working with these tiny connections that the mini panel has, like for hooking this stuff up at shows, so I try to bring most of my connections out to the terminal strip. Then if I'm putting this up at a show, I just have to wire into this terminal strip. It's uh, much easier. Uh, you may be thinking or noticing that the wiring maybe is a little sloppy on this. Well, there's two reasons for that. One, I'm not particularly talented at wiring. Uh, the second reason is I move these, I move this stuff around from one experiment to the next experiment. I think this is about the 20th experiment uh, we've done with this mini panel. So I let, I leave a little extra wire in case I have to relocate these switches. I don't have to go solder it all over again. And one mention about mounting these. These are uh, typical Radio Shack little uh, single pull double throw or single pull single throw switches and I found an easy way to mount these. You get the you can get these uh, one inch by half inch wide angle brackets at Home Depot or Lowe's and that's what I've used to mount these switches. You just have to put a washer in them there because the, uh, the holes in these things are typically bigger than the uh, diameter of the switches, but with a washer it makes an easy way to mount the uh, switches. And the, uh, these these buttons on the uh, control panel, as I mentioned, will start the two train operation or the three train operation. Now also you saw in the video we have what I call the public buttons, which are optional, but I use these, I've been using these at shows where you, you push this button and it starts the, uh, in this video, it's starting the three train operation. And this is wired in parallel with this. You could have more than, I've got two buttons wired in parallel. You could have any number wired in parallel. You're just, any one of those buttons makes a connection to ground that uh, triggers the uh, input number two on the mini panel. And uh, with, the, with this rather crude design I've got, I can flip it over and there's a back side to the thing. I can present the public with a different set of buttons. This is from video uh, 824 where we were doing manual forward and reverse of O-gauge trains. Uh, but this could be a single button that would run the two train operation. So you could have two train, the two train operation on one side if you're doing that at a show and have the uh, three train operation button on the other side like we saw if you're doing that at a show. You wouldn't want to present both buttons to the public or if they pushed the wrong one, uh, it'd mess everything up. We can test this routine using just one of the trains. Uh, if you look, you can see I took the freight engine off the track. It's parked over here 
next to where it would normally sit on the track and likewise back there I took the red engine off the track and it's sitting alongside the track in the spot it would normally park at. So what we'll do is we'll start the uh, yellow engine up and that'll travel around like it normally does and go in front of the detector and when it passes in front of the detector the mini panel will send commands to all three engines just like it normally does we're running the the three train routine but with just one train on the track Now there it went in front of the detector and there's a delay statement pulling that train up to the uh, the first station and normally the red engine would be pulling up to the second station and the freight engine would be on the main line. So what's happening now is the mini panels waiting for the freight engine to reach the detector but I can simulate that with my hand. Now what's happening is the uh, red engine would normally be on the main line and this engine will pull up to the front station and the uh, freight engine would be pulling up to the rear station if it was on the track. Now again, it's waiting for the red engine to go around the main line and pass in front of the detector. So I'll simulate that with my hand. So now it's completing the cycle and I have the continuous run switch open so that yellow engine will stop over there where it normally stops when we have it set to just make a single cycle. But uh, you can see how and if we had the continuous run switch closed then we could keep going through this. But you can see how we can, we can simulate the other two trains with our hands. We just have to wait till the delay statement is done because uh, that delay statement that's pulling them up to the station has to end. And if you use one of the other two trains, you would just want to start it in its normal spot. So the mini panel would be sending the commands in the proper sequence. This is the uh, end of part one. In uh, part two, we'll go over the uh, commands and the wiring diagram in more detail if anybody's interested in the details of that.